five pointers, five red flags to avoid on your tax return. That's right. So how do we know this information? Because we have been tax professionals for a number of years. And the information that we're talking about today are things that we have learned while doing our continuing education credit. Now, we do want to give a disclaimer before we get started that this material has been prepared for informational purposes only, and it should not be relied on for tax, legal, or accounting advice. As always, you should do your research and seek you know, your own advisors before making any decisions or engaging in any transactions. However, with that being said, this is our personal advice that we would give to people. If you want to avoid having a lot of red flags on your tax return, these are some basic steps that you should take and it'll keep you, you know, good. It'll, it'll keep, keep you, you under the radar. And it's, and it's very, very important because, you know, the IRS actually wants people to be under the radar. You know, they, 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 the auto, automation actually picks all these things up. The computer just randomly picks these things up. But when you are actually taking notes of how you prepare your taxes and making sure that you are being aware of what you're putting in, it makes you to be, you know, to know what's going on. So let's let's get into the first one here. Let's go ahead and get into the first one. So our first thing is income discrepancy. So this is really not reporting all of your income. And as tax professionals, you know, if you're listening, you're a tax professional, we know a lot of times some clients may be in a rush to file taxes. Mm. And so they don't give us all the documents that, you know, they actually will be receiving. This is very important now because a lot of people were on unemployment. A lot of people picked up gigs like Uber, DoorDash, all these little gigs where they may be expecting a 1099. It's important to have all of this documented especially a big one is when you receive those interest statements. So a lot of banks will give out interest statements and clients will receive that, but they won't give it to us. So it's very important that we have all these documents because if somebody is reporting to the IRS that you made this income, but you don't put it on your taxes, that's actually one of the most common errors and one of the most common red flags on your taxes. So this one is a very big one, a very common one, income discrepancy. Income discrepancy, I mean, it's very important. And you want to, you know, as you follow your taxes this year, some of you probably already know this. However, it's very important to let your customers know, your clients know that if you receive, you work anywhere for a few weeks out of the year, and you haven't received a W-2 from them, or if you made over $5,000 and you haven't receive the W-2, make sure you contact that employer and say, hey, I haven't received my W-2, I need, to, I need to file it. Because if they don't claim that on their taxes, the IRS already has that W-2 and it's not going to match their taxes. And they're gonna say, okay, well, we're not gonna pay you because you owe us so-so amount. So it's very, very important, very, very vital that you were telling your clients that, hey, did you make sure that you provided me all your W-2s? Because I personally had clients to where, you know, I thought they want a Russian file right now. I actually literally just had a client call me this morning and say, hey, I'm ready to file. And um, I have my last paycheck stub. Can I just file right now? And I'm like, calm down. You know, yeah. you, you want to file with your, the IRS is never open until the next couple of weeks. They're doing all of this on purpose. So you're trying to file with your last paycheck stub and you think I'm just going to do it for you? No. <laughs> right, right. I'm not about to do that for you because that's definitely about to be an income discrepancy going on in that situation. So it's very, very important to actually let the customers know and say, look, I'm the one that's a tax professional here. I know what's going on. This is what I need for you to provide for me. Right. All right. So this is definitely something that we want to pass along to our clients. Now let's talk about another red flag. And this is excessive business tax deductions, okay? This is very, very, very common for very some common. people, and it is a red flag. So what the IRS uses, they have industry-specific standards. So for example, if you're a tax professional, they have the average of what tax professionals usually file, claim as an expense. If you are going over 20% of the average, that is going to be a red flag. 
And this is something that their computer system automatically, you know, catches. So just advise your clients if you're a tax professional when they're coming through, be sure that all the expenses that they're putting down is ordinary and necessary because we know that's one of the rules that the IRS uses. If you have any doubt, the IRS does have um, somewhere on their website industry standards where you can actually see the average and the industry standards. So you can take it a step further and actually look on that to help your client. So that is a big one. Additionally, with the business tax deductions, meals and entertainment are a very, very common one. Yeah, like that's like one of the most common ones because, you know, people say, oh, I could just, you know, I could file my meals that I'm eating, my meals that I eat on my lunch break or my meals that I eat throughout the day. See, you don't really necessarily want to do that because then you're going to seem like, you know, you're not always on the job. So why are you just trying to claim all your meals? Mm -hmm. The main the main ones that you do want to claim though is if it's business related. So now, as you can see in this picture right here, if it's a business related meal where you actually said, oh, okay, I'm going to go to lunch with a client and actually talk about business yeah. or like the way me and her does sometimes, even though we are a couple together, when we go to lunch together and we actually talk about business, about incorporating a, a standard for our business, then we say, okay, well, that's a way to claim the business taxes. But you don't want to keep on saying, okay, well, I want to claim my meals or, you know, or other business, you know, taxes, uh, deductions that, you know, that's out there, the rent, supplies, and all these other ones. It has to be business related. And it's very, very important. There's a law called Benford Law. We're not going to touch more about that. But that's something that's very, very important right now that could be used to know how to get the right numbers accurate. Okay. So for tax professionals, if you are listening to this, I would highly suggest that you look up Benford's law. Yep. Very um, important. It is something that the IRS uses to determine whether there's tax fraud. And it basically is saying the, the frequency of numbers, they, they go in a specific frequency. And so if the numbers are not going in this frequency, Benford's law, then, then it's probably going to be fraud. It's Somebody's probably fraud. fudging the numbers. So that would be important for you to look up. Now with the business meals and entertainment deduction, we do know that the IRS has made it so where that's 100%. So you can get 100% of that. If a client a lot of times people are not going into the restaurants right now. So if they did use takeout, they can still claim that as long as the meal is, you know, it's happening around business. Right. So I'm not just going to take it out and go home and Netflix and chill. I'm actually going to go take it and maybe I'm bringing it to the office and me and my staff are having an actual business meeting. Right. So we're not saying don't take the deduction altogether. However, it's important that you realize and you document what exactly took place during this meeting because this could be a red flag. And if so, you wanna have proper documentation that this is what happened, this is the date, this is what we ate. Documentation is all that is needed. So always. that is number two. Always, always, always. All right, so number three, you don't wanna use rounding numbers. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is such a huge one. So many times I've had new clients come in and one of the first, things that I like to do is take a look at their previous year's taxes because I want to understand why did you leave your previous accountant and let me see what your taxes look like from last year. And whenever I see those round numbers, $1,000 in supplies to, you know, $200 in this, $300 in this, no, that is an automatic red flag. We all know that getting round numbers is like very, very, very rare. Usually when you have some type of supplies, it might be $111.21. It's not going to be round. So when the IRS sees that you have a lot of round numbers, they are already going to think this person is making up numbers. This is not, they're not looking at an actual receipt. They're guesstimating in their head. Okay, this is about how much I paid for this. And right. this is about how much about. I paid for this. See, that, that's the key too. You know, they, when you start the round number, then you tell you, then you start to say, this is about, this is, this is not accurate. This is about, and they're like, you know how they be. They're like, we want accuracy, okay? 
So if you if your supplies is a hundred dollars and twenty cents, say that. Don't tell me your supplies is a hundred dollars because you want to take up twenty cents. No, if supplies is a hundred dollars and twenty cents, put that in. It's very very important that we know not to just round numbers, especially with, when we start putting business um, deductions, business expenses down, because a, a lot of a lot of times it's not going to be a round number, and they want to actually see that it's a legitimate, accurate number than a round number. Now, if it's a round number, it's okay. You know, you don't have to say, okay, because it's a round number, you know, you wanna um, say, or oh, let me just add something else. It's okay if it's a round number. This is just uh, pointers that we are giving you all to just say, okay, when you file a taxes, you wanna be mindful of this point. You got a red flag, exactly. And this is something that can help us as tax professionals, because if we receive a client, and this is a new client we have very little knowledge about, and they bring us a form and it's $120, $200, $300. And which is normal. So they this, all is, this is what they do because they don't <laughs> know. But we can come with our expertise and explain to them, like, are you sure? Do you have the receipts to prove this? Because it's very rare that you have round numbers like this. And this could possibly trigger a red flag on your tax return. So when you become the expert and you can provide this knowledge to your clients, not only are they thankful for to you, but you're also saving yourself and your client a possible audit. So this is another thing that could trigger a red flag using those round numbers. I hope you all are getting some of this good juice. I hope you all are excited because this is some good stuff right here. Number four, let's get into it. Okay. All right. So skipping years, non-filers. Mm -hmm. Business owners, business owners. I know, you know, I actually had a business owner who said, hey, I've been doing business for like three years, man. I never did my taxes. Why? Oh, man, I was busy, man. I was just busy making too much money, man. I ain't, you know, I didn't really even care. I didn't know who to file with. This is where we come in, tax professionals. This is where we stand in and big and say you know what this is why you need a professional on your team this is why you need to hire a tax accountant because a lot of business owners they don't really remember to file taxes they, they're not thinking about taxes they just looking at it like i gotta get the next customer i gotta you know uh pay my employees i gotta you know they that, that's all they're thinking about so filing taxes is something that they don't normally think about. This is for business owners. So this is where we come in and say, okay, have you filed, did you file your last year taxes? Have you filed taxes for the last three years? They don't want to be skipping year. Or for instance, if somebody didn't file taxes last year, they filed taxes the year before that. And then they come to you this year and say, hey, I want to file my taxes. Right. Why didn't so, you file? Why didn't you file? So those skipping years can definitely trigger a red flag because why are you skipping years? Think about it from the IRS's point of view. One year you file taxes and the next year you skip. If you're owed a refund, chances are very unlikely that you are going to skip filing taxes. So if I see that you file and then you skip, I'm going to think as the IRS, like you probably owe us some money for that year and that's why you didn't file. And guess what? If you don't file for a particular tax year, that tax year is open up for your lifetime. So there's no statute of limitations. So you skipping a year is not doing you yourself any favors. If you owe a tax debt, then you can always make a payment arrangement to pay that off. However, those skipping of years could trigger a red flag. Additionally, what did we see last year? If you are self-employed or even if you are employed, the IRS now is making it to where everybody pretty much has to file a taxes if you want to take advantage of the stimulus because what do people have to do? We had a lot of people in our office who said, you know, I didn't file last year, but I want to get my stimulus. Can I file now? Can I file now? If you were a business owner and you wanted to take advantage of the EIDL loan or the PPP loan, what did they ask you for? A copy of your tax return. So that tells us a couple of things. Number one, our industry is not going anywhere because the IRS will always want to collect their money and we will be needed. And number two, more and more people, even though they're already required, they're gonna be forced into this position of filing a tax return. 
whether it be to get a loan like mortgage or student loans, whether it be to take advantage of stimulus or to take advantage of these SBA loans. So in addition to being a red flag, it's really not doing anybody any favors to skip a year, okay? So this is definitely a good one. And do you have anything else? Oh, no, that's it. You know, just, I mean, just let your clients know, hey, did you file last year? Did you file, um, you know, are you, did you need to file? Just make sure that they are keeping up with their taxes and actually filing for the years that they're supposed to file. Absolutely. All right. Now, the number five here is home office deduction. Right, right. You know, a lot of this is uh, 2021, uh, the year after COVID-19, oh where God. everybody had to go virtual. So this is going to be a big one because, <laughs> OK, so we know now that the home office deduction is pretty much always only going to be for self-employed individuals ever since that, what is it, employer use of business deduction. Unreimbursed employer. Uh, un unreimbursed employer yeah. deductions. Ever since that form went away, this is really only 2106. for 2106. Mm -hmm. This is really only for self employed individuals. And it was already like a could possibly be a red flag because they have very strict requirements for the home office deduction. So we know that the home office has to be in a place that's dedicated solely to doing your work. So it can't be your kitchen table. You know, it can't be. A, a place in your bedroom. It has to be a space specifically dedicated to working your business. Hold on, hold on. It, it can be your kitchen table or a place in your bedroom if no. that's where you're working at. Uh -uh, because if you're at the kitchen table, that means you're in the kitchen and you're doing kitchen stuff. Okay, so, well, what, 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 if, what if they say, okay, this is my office and this is, this is where I'm working at. This is just my mm -hmm. my little area where I'm working at, and this is my office, you know. This is the conversation that we have <laughs> with our clients. And, you know, as a tax professional, you can only do your part. So I'm not about to sit here and argue with somebody. I would just be like, okay, you know, if you say so. However, I have been at the IRS tax forum, and I have heard people say that their clients have been audited for this deduction. Oh. And the IRS has actually came out to the home and said, where is this office? Where's the office? Now, even oh. people who had a actual dedicated space for office, the IRS representative came and they saw a, um, what is that? Like a baby bouncer in there where it appeared that, you know, the mother was caring for the child and like little toys. And they wrote off the deduction. They said, no, you don't qualify for this because other activities take place in this office. So you can just explain that to your clients. You know, I wouldn't argue with them. However, if you do not have a dedicated space for this home office deduction, it could be a red flag. They may audit you, and I hope you are prepared in the event of an audit. Oh, so I mean, that, yeah, we we, we could just hear that now. So they actually have to have a dedicated space in their home, dedicated. It literally has to be, you know, almost. You you might have to put the uh, yellow tape like right. caution. Right. Do not Ooh, go not in here. This is for all. business. You know, like even if it's a corner, wherever, your home, <laughs> wherever you want to put it, just make sure that this is for business dedicated because, you know, as we can see now, the home office will be something that people want to come and write off and all these things. And, you know, how to get that is basically, you know, the square roots of the house. You actually got to say, okay. This actual area, you're gonna, they're gonna have to measure that and measure mm -hmm. the square roots mm -hmm. of that actual demarcation yeah. that they say, okay, this is for my business. That and like you nice. said, you know, you don't want to say, okay, this is for my business, and then you say, oh, I'm sleeping in here. This is also my bed, or this is this is where I'm cooking. If mm -hmm. even though even though you you're not even a chef now, if you was a, if you a chef or something, then you know. Possibly, right? Can they can they write that up? There was a chef. I wouldn't do it at all. I wouldn't do it Just at don't all. Just do it. And you know what? With 2020 and a lot of people being quarantined, isolated from the home, we know that a lot of employee employees were pushed to work from home. Exactly. And so, unfortunately, you know, with the new tax laws, they haven't given us any guidance about whether employees can actually take advantage of this home office deduction. So, as of right now, it is only self-employed people. So even if they have a W-2 and they have a home office, they're not going to be able to take advantage of this.
for federal filing purposes. Now, some states may still allow you to take advantage of the home office deduction. And this is where it would you know, fall on us as a tax professional to look up the state, look up the credits that are applicable for that state and see whether we can help our client in that regard. But for the most part, the home office deduction can definitely trigger a red flag. So it is important that our clients know that you, know, you need to have a space specifically dedicated to doing work out of your home. And that's the only thing you use this space for. That's it. And then, you know, you you go with your square roots and you go with calculating your utilities and taking out all the, you know, we, we're not going to talk into all that, but this is how, you know, you make sure that your clients are knowledgeable that, okay, if you have a home office, make sure that it's dedicated. If it's not dedicated, let's just leave home office deduction mm -hmm. alone. It's just leave it alone. Flat. Let's just leave it alone. It's okay. There are other ways for you to get expenses. You know, just leave it alone unless you could actually prove that. Right. Okay, now let's go into a recap. Recap, recap, recap. recap. Okay. So today we talked about five red flags to avoid on a tax return. And the first one is going to be not reporting all of the incomes. I'm so happy that the IRS delayed the filing season until February the 12th. One, so most of these clients can receive their second stimulus and there won't be an income discrepancy with that. But also it gives them more time to receive these W-2s, these 1099, these interest statements, all the things. Just, all just, the tax all the documents things. that they need to file. With. Right, because um, not reporting all your income is actually the most common error for taxes. And so this is a red flag that's easy to avoid if we can just have a little bit of patience. Okay. Now, the second one, excessive business tax deduction. You don't want to be doing too much as far as the deductions. You know, you, we don't want to say, okay, this client didn't make no money at all for the year. And we're like, huh? how, did you even, how did you even live? How did you even live? How did you even sustain? How are you even in business? You know, so you don't want to have excessive tax deductions to where it just doesn't look, um, it just doesn't look realistic. Now, right. Everybody, make sure you look up Benford's Law. It's a great pointer as tax professionals. Look it up, do your research. It's going to really, really help you out. Right. And just as a quick aside, if you have a client who's in an industry that you are unfamiliar with, keep in mind that the IRS does use a industry standard to determine what is average among that profession. And so you can always look it up and see what is the average amount of expenses and just be sure that your client isn't over 20% of that because that is what could trigger the red flag. Okay, great. Now the third one, don't use round numbers. Using round numbers is a big red flag. It is highly, highly unlikely that you paid $100 for marketing, $200 for supplies, $300 for this, $400 for that. Oh, you pay $1,000 for your rent or your mortgage. Usually it's going to be some dollars, $111, $275, whatever it is. If you see that, you should talk to your client and say, you know, do you have the receipts? Because this is highly unlikely. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to go to not filing for a specific year. And we discuss why it's important to file every year so you can take advantage of these stimulus, of these loans, and because we are required to do so. But if you do skip a year, if you file 2018, don't file 2019, then you file 2020, but not 2021 and 2022, that is going to trigger a red flag audit. If the IRS doesn't get to you now, guess what? They have your entire lifetime to go back and audit that year because there is no statute of limitations if you do not file a tax return. So it's very, very important not to skip filing a tax year. Just file, just file your taxes. Tax professionals, let them know. Just file your taxes. That's why we're here to help you out. All right, number five, home office deduction. As you all could hear right here, I feel like I was the client and she was the tax professional and she was just, you know, telling us like, look, as you don't want to just set yourself up with a home office deduction. You want to make sure that you actually have all your ducks in a row. If you don't, just leave it alone and find and do the ones that you have your records for that you could actually claim if you do hey that's fine make sure you have a demarcation at your home that says this is this is my home office there is no other 
um, leisure activities going on. This is just for work, specifically for work, and that's it. Only work. Yeah. So we hope you guys enjoyed this tech professionals. We hope you learned something new. We hope, we hope it helps you all out. <laughs> it was definitely our pleasure to be here and assist you with this. This is our, if you're joining from the meetup, this is actually our first meetup, but it won't be the last. We're hoping to do more Zoom meetings like this so we can get to know each other, kind of mastermind with each other about what is going on. So we are going to stop recording right now. And if anybody wants to come on and speak and